representing supertypes and subtypes. Often two or more entity types seem very similar, but there are a few differences. That is, these entity types share common properties but also have one or more distinct attributes or relationships. To address this situation, the ER model has been extended to include supertype subtype relationship. A subtype is a subgrouping of the entities in an entity type that is meaningful to the organization. While supertype is a generic entity type that has relationship with one or more subtypes. For example, a student is an entity type in a university. Two subtypes of student are graduate student and undergraduate student. There are several important business rules for supertype subtype relationships. The total specialization rule specifies that each entity instance of the supertype must be a member of some subtype in the relationship. The partial specialization rule specifies that an entity instance is allowed not to belong to any subtype. The disjoint rule specifies that if an entity instance of the supertype is a member of one subtype, it cannot be simultaneously be a member of any other subtype. And the overlap rule specifies that an entity instance can simultaneously be a member of two or more subtypes. We have mentioned business rules. Business rules are specifications that preserve the integrity of the logical data model. There are four basic types of business rules. The first one is the entity integrity. It means that each entity type must have a unique identifier that is not null. Another is the referential integrity constraints. These are rules concerning the relationships between entity types. While domains are constraints on valid values for attributes. And triggering operations are other business rules that protect the validity of attribute values. In this section, we briefly describe two types of rules, domains and triggering operations. A domain is the set of all data types and ranges of values that attributes may assume. Domain definitions typically specify some or all of the following characteristics of attributes, data type, length, format, range, allowable values, meaning, uniqueness, and null support. The use of domains offer several advantages. 1. Domains verify that the values for an attribute, stored by insert or update operations, are valid. 2. Domains ensure that the various data manipulation operations, such as joins or unions in a relational database system, are logical. 3. Domains help conserve effort in describing attribute characteristics, because we can define domains and then associate each attribute in the data model with an appropriate domain. On the other hand, a triggering operation, or trigger, is an assertion or rule that governs the validity of data manipulation operations such as insert, update, and delete. A triggering operation normally includes the following components. 1. User rule, a concise statement of a business rule to be enforced by the triggering operation. 2. Event, the data manipulation operation, insert, delete or update, that initiates the operation. 3. Entity name, the name of the entity being accessed and or modified. 4. Condition, condition that causes the operation to be triggered. And 5. Action, the action taken when the operation is triggered. The next topic is about, the role of case and conceptual data modeling.